Hey there, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to show you how to measure pump gear clearance on a Ford C6. So this pump came out of the same unit that was featured in my teardown inspection video and I'm referring to the full length version, uh, not the quick version. So a couple things before we get started, uh, just you know, rehashing points of inspection. So you want to make sure that all your working surfaces are in good shape, you know, they're serviceable, there's no obvious scoring or other kinds of damage. So the areas you really want to pay attention to are going to be uh, the floor itself. So just take your fingernail and you know kind of drag it across. All right, you should not have your fingernail getting caught up on anything. There shouldn't be scoring so deep that it's actually stopping your fingernail from moving. Okay, I don't feel anything like that with this pump. Uh, the other area you want to closely scrutinize is going to be the crescent. So you want to make sure that the crescent is not worn. And usually when you have crescent wear, it shows up as you know real shiny spots or shiny portions of the crescent, and it's usually going to be on the end. So you know, either one. Uh, and you're gonna look at the back side as well as the, the front side. And then lastly, you wanna make sure that the inner diameter here of the, uh, the gear pocket is not excessively scored either, okay? Same deal, run your fingernail across. It should be able to just drag straight across without getting caught up, you know, without getting stuck in a, you know, otherwise deep scoring uh, groove or whatever. Um, so with this pump, it looks good as is, at least you know visually. So we can proceed with um, measuring for clearance. So you're going to need a straight edge. It's roughly about six inches across. The main thing is you want to span uh, one side to the other with it. All right. You don't want to have it to where you know you can only go part way because if you do, then it's going to come in contact with your feel gauges and your your readings won't be right. All right. So all C6 pump gears, to my knowledge measure 660 thousandths thick. Uh, as far as I know, there was never a design engineering change that you saw the introduction of different thicknesses of gears or selective gears or anything like that. Um, they're all 660. So what we want to do is measure for two clearances or two different uh, clearances. The first clearance is going to be your um, face of the drive and the driven gear to the pump body deck surface. So that's this surface here and this in relationship to these two surfaces. Then we're gonna measure the clearance that exists between the outer diameter of the driven gear and the inner diameter of uh, the bore, you know, for the gears. So the spec limits that you want to uh, manage to are as follows. For the face to deck surface, you don't wanna exceed three thousandths of an inch. Um, I've seen as high as 4 thou be fine in stock applications, but for anything high performance, you want to be 3 thou or less. Uh, as far as the clearance between the outer diameter of the driven gear and you know, the wall, you don't want to see anything more than 4 thousandths of an inch. All right, so we'll measure the uh, two clearances I just mentioned here at the pump body, then we'll move to the pump cover, and we'll make sure that this is perfectly flat, because if you have any kind of issues here where when you put your straight edge and you have a feeler gauge pass underneath that straight edge at any point here on the working surface on the cover then you need to add that to whatever you come up with um, you know gear face to deck surface clearance wise on the body and between the two of them as long as you're still under three thou or well, I guess three thou or under then you're technically good to go, but if you're greater than that, when you sum total the two together, then obviously you're gonna to need to either replace the pump or rework it. All right, these are the original gears that came out of this uh, thing. I decided I'm gonna install a new gear set, primarily because both of these two gears have issues. All right, we have a lot of scoring here on the, on the working surface, and then here on the engagement areas, we have some wear, you know, this is um, completely worn out. It's gouged actually. And then, you know, starting to see some mushrooming here where the converter actually mates or meshes with this gear. And if this is allowed to um, get worse, then, you know, you might have issues with this gear binding up or if it has to come out again, then, it, you know, it's probably not gonna go back on. And I've seen that where, um, you know, these uh, flats, if you will, are so mushroomed that that gear won't slide onto the converter journal. And then the outer diameter, the driven gear, it's got a lot of scoring. I could feel it with my fingernail and you can visually see it too. So, I mean, this thing has God knows how many miles on it. 
and if there's any doubt in terms of condition of the gears it's always best just to replace them i mean they're not that expensive and you know it's, it's good peace of mind so all right um when you do this you do not want to have any assembly lube or transmission fluid or anything like that it should be completely dry and i would recommend you do this before you install your bushing and your seal because if this pump has to go to the machine shop or be replaced and then you know you kind of sacrificed a, a good bushing and seal all right first thing what i like to do is i'll just spin them make sure that they do spin make sure that there's nothing weird going on nothing hanging them up so they should spin fairly freely and then next i'll go ahead and i'll come with my straight edge and i'll do the same thing okay they should go all the way around one complete circuit without coming into contact with this straight edge and truthfully i have no idea what this thing is it looks like some sort of i don't know jig using maybe used on some precision tooling i just found it in my press tooling drawer in one of my tool chests so you know it seems to work for this i did mic it and it's perfectly straight all the way across so all right when you do this kind of hasty uh you know checking what this is telling you is that we have some clearance between the deck surface and the drive and driven gear uh, so now it's just a matter of determining how much so you can go right to three thou this is your spec limit and you can see if there's um any clearance or any um any areas along the face here where this is going to pass underneath that straight edge. Okay, nothing there. And it's always going to be a little tighter around the crescent area. So I can get in maybe, I don't know, 5% of the way. 10% max over there, but I can't get in at all over here. All right, so I'm gonna just go 90 degrees with it. And you wanna come in with a shallow angle. Okay, it's, it's coming part way under here. So that tells me that this side is ever so slightly deeper than this side, as far as the pocket is concerned. Again, no big deal. Now, if this feeler gauge, let's just pretend it slides in like this under here, but it's like this on this side, then that would be a problem. Then you would have to either remachine this or if it was you know that much of a disparity, uh, you'd have to replace the pump body. Now, again, to my knowledge, uh, there really hasn't been any change materially with the uh, stator and the bodies over the years so you can mix and match or just you know if you need to replace the stator pump cover and or the body you can do so i mean obviously double check that because i'm not a hundred percent sure but um i've never had any issues when i've done the same so okay so that is the uh pump gear faces to the deck surface. Now I want to measure clearance between the outer diameter and the inner wall. And I go right to four thou. All right, so four thou. What you want to do, in fact, you're going to move, spin it around a little bit. You want to make sure that your, your driven gear is as far on, you know, against the other side as possible from the side you're measuring. Okay, this is going in, but it is making contact with both the uh, outer diameter and the inner wall, and it's taken some effort to install, to get it fully seated. All right, so now I'm gonna come with a 5,000 feeler gauge. And just 
to go through the same exercise. All right, so it's really not wanting to go. I mean, I have forced it in, but that defeats the purpose. Here um, is about as, you know, this location right here is um, going to be about as wide of a spacing I can get between the uh, outer diameter and the inner wall. And this went about maybe a quarter of the way through and then stopped. So I'm going to assess this body to be good uh, with these gears. So 4,000th clearance all around the perimeter. And then we have, uh, I would say, some, I would guess somewhere between one and a half and two thou of clearance between the gear faces and the deck surface, maybe less. I know three thousands would not fit at all anywhere, you know, along the face. So, um, you know, that's kind of what you want to see. All right, so with pump body done, the next thing we need to do is validate that the pump cover is perfectly flat along its working surface. So again, same deal, inspect the surface, make sure that there is no scoring that you can feel. All right, you can see a wear pattern here but it's not that big of a deal because I'm not, you know, getting caught up with my fingernail as I'm dragging it across. Okay. I mean, you can see the uh, extent of where the gears are traveling. Okay, so like out here is irrelevant. It's this area right in here um, based on the wear pattern that you see. You know, that's the area that is of concern. All right, so I have a one thousandth of an inch feeler gauge. That's the thinnest gauge that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to slip this gauge underneath and see if it will pass underneath that straight edge. Oops. All right, I'm gonna go with this angle. All right, that's good. Now I'll just flip it to the other side. Okay, preponderance of working surface is on the opposite side, so not much in the way of area here. All right, so I'm satisfied that this surface is perfectly flat, so there's no adjustment we need to make to the, uh, the numbers that we took on the pump body. So I'll take gears out, get them out of the way. And incidentally, if you haven't observed already, these beveled flats uh, face front. So when you go to install your gear set, you wanna make sure that the flat side, you know, where it comes all the way up to the top of the drive gear faces you. All right, so the last thing I will talk about is the pump body bushing. Now, with Ford transmissions, at least for the C60 Ford E's 4100s and I believe 5010s, um, you're gonna have a directional bushing, all right? So, notice the oil groove here. Let me get that a little closer. So you see how it actually comes to a stop about three quarters of the way to this, this side of the bushing. So the orientation that this bushing needs to be installed in is such that when installed, this oil groove's terminus here is facing forward. So when you press it in, it'll look just like this. If you go the other way with it, then what will happen is um, transmission fluid will be funneled toward the seal. Okay, toward the front seal under high RPM, you'll overwhelm your drain back and you'll push the sealing surface out so far that it will, I guess, become, for lack of a better term, unbound from 
the uh, converter hub and you'll start hemorrhaging fluid there. So you want to make sure that this terminus here on this bushing is not facing in the wrong direction. So it's going to be facing forward when you install this thing. All right, uh, that is Ford C6 pump gear clearance. Uh, we validated that both our um, face to deck surface clearance is in spec. We also validated that the uh, sidewall clearance between the outer diameter of the driven gear and the inner wall of the pump pocket, you know, that clearance is also good. We confirmed with the other straight edge that this working surface is perfectly flat there on the pump cover. So when this goes back in, it should be generating the amount of pump pressure and fluid flow that, um, that it's expected to for a good working serviceable pump assembly. All right, if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. If there's anything else you want me to cover with respect to the C6, let me know, and I'll see if I can put a video together. Um, otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day or evening, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.